Alright folks, so this video is designed to give you a little bit more practice with the three-dimensional shapes. We're really not going to talk about anything new, but really just cover everything that, that we've learned so far in this unit. So the first thing that I'm going to suggest is that you grab a sticky note, and on your sticky note you write your formulas. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video while you grab your sticky note. And now again, I want you to pause the video while you take a minute and get all of these formulas down. Great. I think the most important thing with all of these problems is that you correctly identify what shape it is that you're working with and then use the correct formula. Remember for the triangular prism, you're going to look for those bases in the shapes of triangles. For the cylinder, you're going to look for the circles at the top and the bottom of your figure. For the pyramid, it's going to have one flat base that narrows to a point up at the top. The rectangular prism, think about as being a box. The cone has one circular base that narrows to the point, and the sphere I like to think about as being a ball. But again, the most important thing here is that you correctly identify which shape it is that you're working with so that you can therefore in turn use the correct formula. All right, so I'm going to shrink my sticky note down a little bit to give me some room to work here. And I'm going to start in this first example with this figure here. And I think I'll make these units in feet. So when I look at this picture, I see the top and bottom, or the circular bases at the top and the bottom. That tells me that I'm working with the cylinder here. So the formula that I want to use is volume is equal to pi times r squared times h. And if the diameter is 10 feet, I have to remember that the radius is half of that, or 5 feet. So now I have all the information that I need to go to substitute into my formula. And remember that for these problems that involve pi, you might be asked to do your answer in one of two ways. You might be asked to do it in terms of pi. And if you're asked to give your answer in terms of pi, remember that when you go to get your calculator out, you're going to go and plug everything except for the pi into the calculator. So into the calculator, I'm going to type 5 squared times 6. And my calculator tells me that that's 150. And since I have not yet multiplied through by the pi, it's going to be pi times 150, or 150 times pi cubic feet. So again, that's if they ask for the answer in terms of pi. If they ask for the answer rounded to the nearest cubic foot, then I'm going to go and get my calculator back out and now I'm going to do 150 times pi, or I can just multiply the whole thing exactly as I see it on my paper into my calculator. So when rounded to the nearest integer, 472 cubic feet. But again, it really depends on how they've asked for it. If they've asked for the answer in terms of pi, 
make sure that you leave the pi in your answer. If they ask for it to rounded to anything, rounded to the nearest integer, rounded to the nearest tenth, then you'll put everything into your calculator, including the pi. Beautiful. All right, let's keep moving along here. In this next example, I've got that shape, and I think this time I'll make these centimeters. So that's a 2.2 centimeters. So when identifying the shape, this one here is going to be that triangular prism. So the formula that I want to use is volume is equal to area of the base, or capital B, times H. Remember that uppercase B really stands for the area of the triangular base. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to find the area of a triangle whose base is 5 centimeters and whose height is 2.2 centimeters. So to find the area of a triangle, we do 1 half times the base times the height. So I'm going to go get my calculator out, and I'm going to do 1 half times 5 times 2.2. And my calculator tells me that that's 5.5. So I'm going to come back up to my formula for volume. And in for capital B, I know now that capital B, or the area of the base, is 5.5. And height, remember, is the height of the prism, or the distance between the two bases. So this distance that connects my triangular bases here is 10, making the height of my prism 10. And that makes the volume either 55 centimeters cubed or 55 cubic centimeters. Beautiful. Let me grab my sticky note and drag my sticky note down. You're probably going to want to either flip to the top of the next page or keep moving your sticky note right along with you as well. Because again, that really is the very most important thing here is that you are using the correct formula. All right. In example three, let's start with a figure that looks like this. So I'm going to say that this base is a square that measures 6 feet by 6 feet, and that this height is 10 feet. So the first thing that we want to do, of course, is identify the shape. It's a pyramid. So the formula that we're going to use is volume is equal to 1 third times the area of the base times the height. So our base in this instance is going to be that square. So I can find the volume by doing base times height or side squared or, but it's a square base measuring six by six, making its area 36. So into this formula for volume, in for capital B, the area of the base, I'm going to do 36. And then the height of that prism is going to be that distance from the tippy top down to the base, or 10. And this one I'm going to grab my calculator for also. So 1 third times 36 times 10. There. 
I'm having a little trouble pulling up my fraction bar. Or 120 cubic units. And in this case, the units that I'm working with are feet. Beautiful. All right, let me drag my little sticky note right along with me, get some more space here. And again, if you need to flip up to the top of the next page, go ahead and flip up to the top of the next page. All right, in this next example, I'm terrible drawing this. Think about this like a lacrosse ball or a soccer ball. So again, the most important thing that you do here is to identify the shape and the shape that we're working with in this circumstance is the sphere. So the formula that we want to use is that volume is equal to 4 thirds times pi times r raised to the third power. And they've made this nice and easy for me in this problem and that I already know that the radius is 3. And again, you have to be very careful with any type of problem that involves pi. If they ask for your answer in terms of pi, you're going to put everything into the calculator except for the pi. So in this situation, I'm going to type in 4 thirds times 3 to the third, but I am not going to type in the pi. So 36, and I have not yet multiplied times pi. So this volume would be 36 times pi cubic units. And again, that's if they ask for my answer in terms of pi. If they ask for it rounded to the nearest tenth of a cubic unit, then I would get my calculator out, and I would either enter the whole thing into my calculator in this case, I'm just going to multiply that 36 times pi into the nearest cubic unit. I would have 113 cubic units. So again, two different ways to express your answer. If they ask for your answer in terms of pi, Remember that your answer will have a pi in it. And this is if they ask for the answer in something that's rounded. All right. We've got one more to look at this morning, folks. We're almost there. Let's see what goodness I have for you here for this last example. I've got a figure that's shaped like that. And I'm going to say that that's 5 inches. And that's 9 inches. So maybe it's a big whopping ice cream cone. Let me go ahead and drag my sticky note down. And as far as the shape of the figure, I just said it when I said the words ice cream cone. So there's the fellow that we're working with here. And therefore, the formula that I need to make sure that I, I use is volume is equal to 1 -third times pi times r squared times h. So I now know everything I need to substitute into this formula. My r is 5 and my h is 9. So again, with these problems that involve pi, be aware of different ways in which you might be asked. If you're asked to leave it in terms of pi, then I'm going to go to my calculator and into my calculator, 
I'm going to type everything that I see there except for the pi. So I've got the one third times the five squared times the nine or 75 and I'm still haven't multiplied through by the pi yet so 75 pi and it's either cubic inches or inches cubed and if they ask for it rounded to say the nearest tenth then I'm going to go grab my calculator and I'm going to multiply 75 times pi and to the nearest tenth that would be 235 0.6 cubic inches. So again, the difference between terms of pi and an answer that has been rounded, whether it's to the nearest cubic unit or the nearest tenth of a cubic unit, the big thing that's important there is that it will not have a pi in it. As always, folks, thank you for the gift of your time and for all of the hard work that you've done. I'm excited because I feel like we're going into the final stretch of the year now. Um, I feel like we're in a position to have a really good, successful end of the year despite a lot of unforeseen circumstances. You people have really risen to the challenge, and Ms. Andre and I, I I know I speak for Ms. Andre also when I say that we're all really proud of the way that you have handled things. You do have a CASA Learning that goes along with this assignment. Your CASA Learning is going to be assignment 1010, Mixed Practice. And as always, if you have questions, if you have things that don't make sense, you can always feel free to email one of the two of us or check in with us during office hours on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 to 11 in the morning. All right, take care, folks. Stay healthy. Miss you.